So here we are in Serif Web Plus 7 and we're going to be creating our Super Splash project. So to do that, we're going to click on New Site and we have a few details we need to fill in. For the site name, I'm just going to enter Super Splash and under Site URL, I can make that up because I'm not actually putting it online, but I might as well make it something believable. Now under Color Scheme, we want to choose a color scheme that is appropriate for our website, so it's going to appeal to our audience. Um, it will be relevant for our site, so I'm expecting, given that we've got a water park, for maybe some blues to be in there. So we can look through the list of default color schemes and see if there's one that is suitable. Um, but it might be that they've got some that are close, but not quite what we're looking for. For example, POP01 is close to what I want, but maybe I'd rather have sort of oranges rather than pinks in there. So if that's the case, then click on the three dots next to color scheme, choose color schemes from our tabs up here, go down again to the one that's close to what you want. So I'm gonna to go to POP01, double click on it, and it loads that palette for that color scheme over here on the right. Then you just need to go into any one of the colors you want to change. So I want to change this red. And the little drop down next to it will allow you to bring up uh, some different colors to replace it with. And for instance, I might just replace it with orange. If I wanted more specific control, I could have gone to more colors. And I could have chosen any color I like. Um, and I could have been very particular about the exact orange that I wanted, specifying if I knew them, uh, the RGB values perhaps for that color, or I could even use this little dropper to pick a color from the screen somewhere. Uh, so maybe I could have loaded up my logo and picked my main color from the logo. But I don't want gray, I want an orange, so I'm gonna go back and select the orange that I want, press OK. Once you've got your scheme as you like it, you just need to press Save As and give it a name. So let's call it the Super Splash Colors and I can press OK. So now I've set my color scheme for my website to be my Super Splash colors. We're going to use the default uh, page size and we're going to set the number of pages we want to four. So that's the home page, the rides page, facilities page and tickets page. We're going to add a navigation bar and we want to save the site as soon as we create it. So let's press start new site and you'll be asked to save your site somewhere. So go to your subjects folder, go to your digital literacy folder, and maybe make a new subfolder called Super Splash. And just for your file name, call it Super Splash website and press save. So that's created our project. Um, we don't really have anything particular in it yet. We've got a home page, we've got page two, page three, page four, which we can see from our our site controller on the side. So the first thing we need to do is modify our master page. To do that, go right down the bottom and here you can choose which page you're looking at and you'll see that one of the pages is called Master A. So click on that and that is now our master page. That's what we're editing. So on our master page, we want to do a few things. Firstly, we want to add our site logo. Secondly, we want to define what our navigation bar will look like because at the moment it's very, very boring. And thirdly, we're going to set a background color for the whole site. So let's start by adding our site logo. Now I've got my site logo open here in Serif Draw Plus and I want to export it in a format that I can use in my website. I'm going to click and drag a box around my logo and that will select it. And I'm going to go to File, Export, Export as Picture, and I need to choose a few options. So I want to choose the selected objects and I want the format to be Portable Network Graphics PNG. I need to make sure that the bit depth is 32. If it's lower, you'll get a white background, but I want a transparent background and that's shown by this checkerboard effect. So to get that, I need to choose 32 as my bit depth. And once I've got that set, I can press export. And I need to set where I'm going to save this. So let's go back to our subjects folder, 
Digital Literacy Super Splash, and I'm just going to name it, yeah, logo is fine, logo.png it will be. Press save. Now if I go back into Serif Web Plus, I can insert my logo by going to the insert menu, picture, from file, and going to my subjects folder, digital literacy, super splash, and finding that logo. Press open, and I just need to click and drag where I want the logo, and I can set it to pretty much any size. So I think I'm gonna make it about that large, and I'm just gonna move it slightly higher on my page. And now that I've added that to my master page, if I go and look at any of my other pages on my website, like my home page, or page two, or page three, notice that my logo is on all of those pages because I put it on the master page. Now the next thing I want to do is customize my navigation bar because at the moment it looks really, really dull. So let's click on the navigation bar. To do that, I have to be on my master page. And I can click edit navigation bar. Now, when the Edit Navigation Bar window appears, it will take me to the Navigation Type tab. But if I go back to the Type tab here, confusingly called Type, right next to Navigation Type, I can choose some different built-in designs for my Navigation Bar. Now, if you're not feeling particularly confident, you can just choose one of the built-in types and stick with it. But you might want to get one that's close to what you're looking for and then modify it. And there are quite a few different types to choose from. You just need to click on the different categories in the left-hand side and then see what different types of options that provides you with. Try not to be too blown away by the different graphical options and end up picking something that isn't actually appropriate for your site's design. I'm going to pick this rather simple design, but then I'm going to make some modifications to it to change its colors to make it a bit more vibrant and exciting on my web page. So to do that, once you've selected the particular design you want, go to Appearance. And under Appearance, we can look at the different parts of our navigation bar. So we've got buttons, separators, and a background color. First of all, I'm gonna change the background color. So I click on the Edit button, and I'm just gonna choose Select the sort of rectangle that forms the background, and I'm just gonna choose a nice bluey color. Something appropriate for a water park. Once I've got that color as I want it, I just need to press Commit Changes. And that changes the background color for my navigation bar. Now I'd like to change my buttons because by default, it's dark gray showing which page I'm on, or light gray when I hover over and they're not particularly nice colors, I'd like to change them to some different orangey colors. So I'm gonna to go to my buttons, and I'm going to click the little pencil icon next to the button design. Now, when you're in your button design, there are various different states to your button. So we've got a normal appearance, that's what it looks like when you're not touching it. You've got the down state, which is how that button will look when you're on that particular page, and the hover state, which is what that button will look like when the mouse is hovering over it. So let's start with the hover one. Double click to select it, and we just need to click on the gray rectangle and change it to whatever color we would like it to be when we're hovering over. I'm gonna choose a light orange. It's a little bit difficult to see white text on orange, so I'm going to click on the text, and change its color to a darker black color. Now I'm going to change my down state, so I'm going to double click on down. And remember, this is what the uh, button in your navigation bar will look like when you're on that page. So this is a real strong cue to your user as to where they are in the website. So it needs to really stand out. So I'm going to click on my dark gray, and I'm gonna choose a nice strong orange color. And because my background is a strong color, I'm gonna get away with some lighter text. So I'm going to want to change the um, color here to white, but I just need to make sure I unselect change all text, otherwise it changes every type of uh, button state. So 
make sure that's not selected and then I can go to color and change my color to white. So my normal button appearance is just black text. My selected state is white text on dark orange and my hover state is black text on light orange. So let's commit the changes and we can see how that looks in our preview area. So the page I'm on will be dark orange, the other items in my menu will just be black on my blue background and as I hover over I get a light orange appearance. There are a few other small changes we're going to make so we're just going to set make all buttons the same width um, and stretch buttons to fit width and that will make them just appear a bit nicer on my page and when we're done we can press OK. So now that I've got my navigation bar designed as I want it, I'm going to try moving it around on the page and um, just to integrate it better into my overall site design. So I'm going to keep it at the top because that's where people sort of expect to find it, but I'm going to make it a little bit wider. I'm going to bring my logo up a little bit um, and I'm just going to add a shape behind here to sort of give the appearance that it carries on into the rest of the page width. So to do that I'm going to grab uh, a quick rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag that rectangle so it takes over the missing space here next to my navigation bar and with it selected I'm going to choose my color picker, click on the blue of my navigation bar so you can see now it matches but I need to change the line so I'm going to click on line and I'm going to choose transparent and now that I've got a transparent line I'm just going to make it a little bit wider so that it fills up the remaining space in my page and now I just need to click on it and choose send to back and that pushes it behind my logo. Now I can move my logo a little bit over possibly resizing it as well and now I've set up my navigation bar and integrated it nicely into my site design and on each of the different pages on my website that navigation bar will appear. Now you've no doubt noticed that our navigation bar suffers from the fact that it says page 2, page 3 and page 4. In order to change that we need to change the names of our pages in our site. So if you were to right click on page 2 down here in your um, site pages tool and go to page properties you can change the page name. So let's make this our rides page and let's specify the page title as Super Splash Rides as well and click OK. Let's do the same for page 3 and make this facilities and this is where maybe our restaurants and shops we might have detail about those and page 4 let's make that our buy tickets page and press OK. So now our navigation bar has the correct names for each of our pages. Now there's one last thing I'd like to do on my master page and that's just to change my site background from being white to being a very light blue colour. So I'm going to go back to my master page, right click and go to page properties and under page properties I can go to background and instead of using the site appearance I'm going to use a page background and it says background colour and here I can choose any of the colours in my palette or I could have gone to more colours and chosen any specific colour that I wanted. I just need to press OK and that sets the background colour for all of the pages on my website. Another option for my site background would have been to use a graphic. So let's imagine that when I did my research I had come across this water background which I wanted to use as the background for all of the pages on my website. To do that I could have gone to uh, free download and downloaded that image so I can download that image and if I go now back into Serif Web Plus and I make sure I'm editing my master page and I go to page properties I could have added a background image. So if I do add and I can browse for that image that I've downloaded. So it'll be in my downloads folder and by default 
it will place it in the middle of my page. But I'm going to untick scroll to with page so that I don't run out of um, that image if it ends up being shorter than the length of my page. I press OK now, OK again. Now I've got that image as the background for all of the pages on my website. Depending on the image that you choose, you might find it's a little bit distracting having um, a graphic as your background instead of just a solid colour. So you need to use a little bit of your own judgement and experiment a little bit to see whether or not having a background image works for you. Finally, let's just test to make sure all the changes we make have worked. To do that, we're going to preview our site. So, there's a button here on the toolbar that if you hover your mouse over, says preview site. And if you click on that, it'll bring up a little tab for you where you can see how your site works. So we've got our home page, and I can click on rides, and it takes me to the rides page, facilities, buy tickets. So there you go, you've set up your project, you've customized your master page by adding in a site logo and modifying your site's navigation bar. Now you're ready to actually put some content into each of your pages, and we'll do that in our next lesson. Don't forget to save your project as you go along by clicking on the save button so that the changes that you've worked on today will still be there when you come back next week.